Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered them, Why do you also disobey the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever may tell his father or his mother, Whatever help you might otherwise have gotten from me is a gift devoted to God. He shall not honor his father or mother. You have made the commandment of God void because of your tradition. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine rules made by men. He summoned the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand. That which enters into the mouth doesn't defile the man, but that which proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father did implant will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter answered him, Explain the parable to us. So Jesus said, Do you also still not understand? Don't you understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the belly and then out of the body? But the things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, sexual sins, thefts, false testimony and blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man but to eat with unwashed hands doesn't defile the man. Jesus went out from there and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a Canaanite woman came out from those borders and cried, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, you son of David. My daughter is severely demonized. But he answered her not a word. His disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered, I wasn't sent to anyone but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered, It is not appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you even as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. Jesus departed there and came near to the Sea of Galilee, and he went up into the mountain and sat there. Great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others, and they put them down at his feet. He healed them, so that the multitude wondered when they saw the mute speaking, injured whole, lame walking, and blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away fasting, or they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where should we get so many loaves in a deserted place as to satisfy so great a multitude? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish. He gave thanks and broke them, and gave to the disciples and the disciples to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled. They took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces that were left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. Then he sent away the multitudes, got into the boat, and came into the borders of Magdala. The Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there will be no sign given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. He left them and departed. The disciples came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. 
they reasoned among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. Jesus, perceiving it, said, Why do you reason among yourselves, you of little faith, because you have brought no bread? Don't you yet perceive, neither remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up, nor the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you don't perceive that I didn't speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he didn't tell them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say John the Baptizer, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he charged the disciples that they should tell no one that he is Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this will never be done to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render to everyone according to his deeds. Most assuredly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will in no way taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom.'